The sun is firing solar storms and one of them is headed straight toward Earth. Will it affect that historic SpaceX launch of American astronauts? Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely beginning to pick up. We have no less than four bright regions and they look like new cycle bright regions, so our sun is definitely waking up. On top of that, we're seeing multiple solar storm launches and even some radio bursts. It's fantastic news. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see the disk doesn't look all that busy, but right in the middle of the disk, kind of near this coronal hole, we actually had a solar storm launch. Now this is the solar storm that's Earth directed, but lucky for us, it's a stealthy solar storm, which means it's it's pretty weak and pretty wispy. So that's going to be headed to Earth, and I'll talk a little bit more about that because it looks like it might actually hit Earth right about when the astronauts are supposed to lift off in the Dragon capsule. But if you look at the eastern limb on the north on the uh, front side sun, you can actually see starting around the 27th, you can see some activity going here. These are the bigger solar storms that are being fired. And as we switch to our far sided sun, this is stereo and it's looking at the sun pretty much from the side. You can see that bright region in the north and right about the 27th, wait for it, bam, do you see that right there? And then wait, once again, Bam! Another one on the 28th. These are two big solar storms that have been launched. And if you look again in this southern region, just rotating into Stereo's view, you can see yet another region. This is also a new cycle region, and it's also beginning to fire solar storms. So we're actually getting some noise from this thing. The fun thing is that we actually are beginning to see some radio bursts as well. Stereo has picked up the radio bursts. You can see them here. It's not a lot of noise, but just get ready, amateur radio operators and emergency responders. As these regions rotate into Earth's side, you could start getting some mild radio bursts, about 10 megahertz and below. So just going to have to deal with that as they come back into view. And aurora photographers, get ready. We might have some chances for some decent solar storming and aurora. Switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun from the North Pole, and Earth is over here to the right. Now you can see those solar storms being launched. There's actually kind of like a two-part structure here, and they're pretty wispy. And the reason for them being wispy is because it's a stealthy solar storm that's been launched, and it's also kind of been launched in two parts. Part of it lifted off on the 25th, and part of it followed on the 26th. So it looks kind of like a dual little wave coming towards Earth. And uh, believe it or not, it's actually going to hit Earth right on the 30th, which is, of course, right in the middle of this historic astronaut launch by SpaceX. But don't worry, this is a stealthy solar storm, which means it's very weak. It's not driving any radiation storms or any radio bursts. So it looks like everything's going to be in the clear for the launch. But you Aurora photographers, you might get a pretty decent show that night. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute. And now for your Leo Mio Geo Orbit Outlook. In anticipation of the upcoming SpaceX launch for the astronauts, we are switching to our near-Earth environment, but we're going to look at the high-energy stuff. These are the particles that can penetrate more deeply into spacecraft electronics and cause single event upsets and things like that that might actually affect the launch. Taking a look at the medium energy particles, you can definitely see a red ring around the geo orbits and it kind of waves in and out. It's not really building all that much, but it is sustaining a low level. And as we look down to the Leo orbits, that's really what we care about right now. We are seeing a little bit of a light ring around Leo. So that's going to make us worry just a, a little bit that we need to take a look at even higher energy particles. So as we switch to the really high energy stuff, now, this is the stuff that might actually cause issues for Dragon if the fluxes are too high. You can take a look. There really isn't much going on. You got a little bit of enhancement. You can see the yellow ring around the Mio orbits. But as we go down into the Leo orbits, there really isn't much there. So it looks like everything is going to be fine for the Dragon launch. We don't have to worry about that solar storm that's coming in because it's going to be very weak and it's not going to enhance these, this near-Earth radiation environment very much. So the astronauts, they're all in the clear. Switching to our moon, 
We are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, and by June 3rd, the moon will be about 90% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, say, I don't know, maybe a dragon capsule or a couple comets or maybe even some aurora, you're going to have to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that stealthy solar storm that was launched back on the 25th and 26th. Now this is going to be a little bit of a two-parter, so we're going to expect it to hit pretty weakly over a couple days. Now at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled to possibly active conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm. And this could happen right around the 30th, but it should linger maybe even into the 31st. And yes, that does correspond to the launch of the Dragon capsule with the astronauts in it. So don't worry though, this is a weak solar storm. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting unsettled conditions, but we could have up to about a 20% chance of active conditions. And again, this will linger in through the 31st before things die down. So you mid-latitude aurora photographers, if you're in, let's say, Canada or the UK, you especially the high end of that, you could possibly get some show if the sun isn't too bright and it sets for you. And also uh, in like places like New Zealand and Tasmania, you also might get a little bit of a fleeting show. It won't last all that long. And if you don't catch it this time, well, from the bright regions that are coming into view, it looks like we're gonna have a chance for bigger solar storms later. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, in the interest of the upcoming Dragon launch from SpaceX, with the American astronauts on board, you can tell I've changed the charts up just a little bit and added a bit more information. Now, as we take a look at our sun and we look at the bright regions on the sun, we do have four different bright regions. Several of them are already on the Earth-facing disk, but the sun is spotless right now. And we have no risk for radio blackouts from big solar flares. So you GPS operators, you guys should be very happy. Your GPS reception on Earth's day side should be very good. Now, we are seeing Seeing a few radio bursts coming off of the sun's far side from some of the regions that aren't quite in Earth view yet. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to hear a little bit more noise on the radio bands here over the next eh, three or four days as these regions begin to rotate into view. But it should be more of a nuisance than anything else. On top of that, the solar flux, it's been in the poor range over the past couple days for radio propagation on Earth's day side. But as you can see, we're going to move back up into the low 70s, and that should boost the radio propagation on Earth's day side, and that will continue easily over this next week. Now, as we switch to our near-Earth launch environment for radiation, we're taking a look at those radiation belts and the, the, the Geo, Mio, and Leo orbits. Now, you can see in the Geo, right about on the 30th, when those weak solar storms hit, everything should get flushed. You can see everything will be in the green, and then the Geo orbits will start building up a little bit of flux, and that could be an issue for satellite satellite operators that are operating geo satellites and Mio will follow suit. You can see it'll intensify a little bit over uh, in the 31st and end of the 1st of June. But luckily the Leo orbits stay completely in the green. These are very weak solar storms folks so we don't have to worry about the Dragon launch. The astronauts will be absolutely fine. Now also because we are just beginning to come out of solar minimum we also have a, a higher uh, cosmic ray flux than we normally would have. So you frequent flyers and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high altitudes and high latitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. We have multiple bright regions, both on the front side and on the far side of the sun, and they're all firing solar storms. Now, luckily, the solar storm that's headed towards Earth right now is a very weak solar storm. And yes, it's going to hit Earth right when the Dragon capsule is launching with this historic payload of astronauts from American soil for the first time in like almost a decade. But don't worry, everything is in the clear for the astronauts. This should be a very weak solar storm, and they 
have nothing to worry about. However, you aurora photographers, especially at high latitudes, expect to get a show. It could last easily over a couple days. And then those of you at mid latitudes, well, if you're really diligent, you might catch a sporadic or fleeting show here and there, but it might be a little bit tougher. The lucky thing is, is that we've got the stronger solar storms being fired on the sun's far side. And as those regions rotate into earth view, it looks like we could have another chance for even stronger solar storms here maybe in the next week or so. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the solar flux kind of dipped back into the poor range for radio propagation on Earth's day side, but it looks like it's going to come back up again as these new regions rotate into Earth view. And don't worry, it's not your rig. You are hearing a few radio bursts here and there. You're hearing a little bit of noise on the band, so don't worry. It's just the sun beginning to wake up. Been a long time coming, right? Now, also, you GPS users, you know what? Your reception on Earth's day side should be pretty good. I wouldn't expect any issues from these low uh, um, frequency radio bursts. It's not going to be a problem for GPS reception. You might have an issue once the solar storms hit, especially on Earth's night side. So be sure to stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora if you want to make sure that your GPS reception is top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.